The fate of the apostles. Do we really know what happened to the apostles? In this video, we'll be covering the non-biblical historical evidences for the martyrdom of the apostles. There is quite a bit of reliable historical references, over 100 biblical references, and approximately 30 non-biblical references. There's a great deal of early historical non-biblical references to the fate of the apostles from Ignatius, Clement, Tertullian, and many more. One of the main factors for determining reliable history is the time of the event to the earliest record. With the apostles, we have the first generation, second generation, and third generation witnesses of the events. Much of the early historical references to martyrdom would have included first-hand eyewitness accounts of the martyrs themselves, or at least their immediate followers thereof, making them very reliable. In First Clement, we see a group mentioning of the apostles, similar to what we see in the New Testament when they were referred to as the Twelve. We'll look at some specific individual apostle references later. In the early letters of Ignatius, we see Peter specifically mentioned reaching out and touching Jesus. And for this reason, it says that they also despised death in a reference to martyrdom. In Ignatius' letter to the Ephesians, we read, You are a passageway for those slain for God. You are fellow initiates with Paul, giving direct mention of Paul's martyrdom. In yet another mention of Peter in 1 Clement, we see that he bore his witness and went to the place of glory that he deserved with regard to his martyrdom. Further on in 1 Clement 5, 7, we see Paul bearing chains seven times, being sent and exiled and stoned and being transported to the holy place, meaning death. In Polycarp's letter to the Philippians, we specifically see Paul himself mentioned, along with other apostles, where they are in the place they deserved with the Lord, with whom they also suffered, for they did not love this present age. In Tertullian's Against Heresies, we see Peter, Paul, and John, all three mentioned by name with regard to their martyrdom. Pliny the Younger mentions in letters that he interrogated those that were Christians and those that persisted he ordered to be executed, giving us early references to the martyrdom of Christians. Written in a similar time of Pliny the Younger, we have Tacitus in the Annals, where he specifically refers to people called Christians, and then goes on to mention crucifying, killing, and martyring them. One of the early historical references specifically mentions Stephen, Simon Peter, Paul, James, and John by name as true martyrs. Since the apostles desired recognition of Christ over recognition of self, we shouldn't be surprised that we see very little individualistic references to the apostles. Next, we're going to determine the reliability of the historical evidence that we do in fact have for the apostles. First, we'll look at Peter, with whom we have the highest possible probability with over 10 early historic references to his life and martyrdom. Next we see Paul, who also has the highest possible probability, with equally large number of early references to his life and martyrdom. James, son of Zebedee, is also given the rating of highest possible probability due to the early references that he has, as well as no competing traditions to his martyrdom. With regard to James, the brother of Jesus, the traditional view is that James was martyred in Jerusalem in AD 62, which has been very carefully analyzed, giving him a very probably true rating. While the evidence for Thomas isn't conclusive, 
There's enough reasons that indicate that he did in fact die in Martyr's Death in India to give him a more probable than not rating. The history of Andrew engaging in missions, going to Greece, and experiencing martyrdom gives him a more probable than not rating as well. The historicity of Philip engaging in missionary work outside of Jerusalem and experiencing martyrdom gives him a rating of as plausible as not. Matthew engaging in missionary work outside of Jerusalem is rated as very probably true. However, there is some disagreement over whether he was martyred or died a natural death. With regard to the remaining six, while there is no record that any of them recanted their faith, there is little evidence that is early and much of it is legendary and contradictory. What we can satisfactorily conclude is that the apostles were all willing to suffer and die because they believed that Jesus had risen from the grave. Thank you for watching The Fate of the Apostles, created by Randall Chase, referencing The Fate of the Apostles by Dr. Sean McDowell.